It's time for Thriller Thursdays, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Hey, there's someone out there needing gas, Woody. Whose turn is it? Yours or mine? Whose do you think? Okay, fine. It's time for Earl and Woody, those two proprietors of the full tank gas station in the little town of Puscataha, Oklahoma. It's winter in the quiet town, and the boys are working on a cold and snowy day. Let's see what they're up to. What were you doing for so long out there? I'm nothing. It didn't look like nothing. Well, you'd sure know what nothing looks like. That's for cotton picking, sure. What's that supposed to mean? Just what I said. You got ears. Listen, Woody. I was just asking what you were doing out there. And I told you, Earl, nothing. That was Mrs. Lane's car, wasn't it? Was it? You sure know it was. Well, so what if it was? We run a filling station. We fill up people's cars when they drive up, and the bell rings. That's how our business works. Or didn't you notice? Boy, are you persnickety today. I am not. Woody, you're irritable and you're getting on my nerves. Well, you don't have to talk to me, you know. Oh, I get it now. Get what? (laughs) I know what happened now. What happened? You know. How do I know if you haven't told me what you know? What does that even mean? Well, you tell me. I tell you what I do know. She said no. Who did? You know who? Who? Woody. Earl. You know, I can do this all day. And with it starting to snow out there, we'll have all the time in the world as hardly anyone will be coming out. Well, says you. I do. You know how folks are around here. A prediction of flake of snow, and they raid the grocery stores, get bread, cheese, and milk. And then they fill up their car with gas. They did all that yesterday before the snow. Well, I hardly noticed. You hardly noticed because you can't get a certain widow lady out of your mind. Mercy, you're one thick-headed individual. I have nary a clue as to what you are talking about. Whatever you asked Mrs. Lane to do, she said no. Well, how do you know that? Which part? The part where you asked Mrs. Lane to do something with you or the part where she said no? Either one. Well, you asked her because you've had a crush on her for two years and you're predictable. I am not. I knew you were going to say that, Woody. You did not. I knew you'd say that, too. And I knew she said no to you because she always says no to you every time you ask her to go out and do something with you. Well, well, what do you know about it? I just told you. you got to pay attention around here. We're running a filling station, not some dating service. And before you ask, we are not about to start a dating service just so you can get a date with Mrs. Lane. I wasn't going to say anything of the kind. You had that look on your face. What look on your... Well, I mean my face. That one. Which one? Look in the mirror in the bathroom. Oh. See? Yeah. I told you so. You did. I sure did. Why won't that woman go out with me? Her husband's been dead for nigh on ten years now. She's not interested. Why is that? I'm available, aren't I? You are at that. Well, I'm not completely repulsive to look at. Nope. I got genuine personality. You do? And I go to church every time the doors are open. I know. I've seen you. Then what is it? She don't like you. Well, I kind of figured that one out. Is it because I own a filling station? A half own. Is it because I half own a filling station? Have you tried asking her? No. Why don't you? Well, why would I ask her something like that? Why wouldn't you? Well, what would she say? Why don't you ask her? How come I got to do that? Why are you asking so many questions? Why are you asking so many questions? Okay, okay, stop. I'm tired out. Me too. Where oh. is everybody? In front of their fireplaces warming their toes. That is, if they're smart. Man. Man is right. Won't you go change out the window cleaner out there? Because it's froze over. Well, go bust it. You go bust it. I got the books to look at. I'll look at the books. You go out there and bust the window cleaner and try and figure out a way to woo Mrs. Lane. She is pretty, isn't she? Yes, she is. I think so. I know you do. (laughs) So does Boyd. Langston? Yeah. Since when? Oh, since uh, her old man died from the big C. Boyd Langston? You heard me. 
Now go out there and bust eyes on the window clean. Well, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, just a second here, Earl. Boyd Langston. Yeah? Haven't you noticed how he hangs around after church every Sunday just to say hi to her? No. I think he even got her to go out to dinner with him afterwards one time. No, what? He did, too. I think I'm going to be sick. I would be if I was you. Well, you're not. I'd still be sick. Well, that ain't fair. Oh, never is. I mean, he's done been married once. It's not his fault she left him. Oh, yes, it is, too. The man's meaner than anyone in town. He's a tough man to get along with, yeah. He's mean. Well, he can be difficult. Just say it. The man is mean. Oh, the man is mean. Satisfied? I am. Well, you got to help me come up with some way to get her to go out with me. First, we've got to get her to pay attention to you. All right, let's start there. When was the last time you had a haircut? Well, what's that got to do with it? I ain't playing questions with you again. Answer my question. Oh, a couple months ago. No wonder you look like a sheepdog. I do not. Go look in the mirror. I ain't going to do it. I know what I look like when I see myself shaving every morning. And when was the last time you shaved? It is winter. It is cold out there. This is Puscataha, Oklahoma, Woody. It don't get that cold. It snowed, didn't it? Freak storm won't happen again. Until next year. Or the year after. Well, anyway, this is what I do in winter. I grow my hair out and my beard some to keep my head and face warm since someone I know, who shall remain nameless, doesn't go out to fill up folks' vehicles. I do, too. You do not. Not in winter, anyway. That's when I look at the books. It's called taxes for your information. Well, for your information, that's why I grow out my hair and my beard. And that's why Mrs. Lane won't give you the time of day. Hmm. Don't hmm me, pal. Believe it or don't. I believe you. I believe you. I was just thinking. Don't strain yourself. Ha ha. Very funny. I think so. I was being facetious. I know what you were being. Hey, and since when do you know big words like that anyway? Mrs. Lane don't care about big words. Shut up and mind your own business. Hey, you were the one who got this whole conversation started, you dummy. Well, I'm ending it. Fine. I got books to look at anyhow. Well, that suits me fine. Excellent. Good deal, Lucille. Um, say, Earl? What now? Can't you see I'm busy? Well, uh... What? You really think I ought to go get a haircut? I thought that conversation was over. Well, I started it up again. Do you or don't you? What do you think? Well, I am getting pretty shaggy, huh? Like a sheepdog. She probably didn't even know it was me out there talking to her. Oh, I'm sure she knew it was you. You're up. Nope. Looking at the books. Oh, no. What? Get over here. Now. What is it? It's Boyd Langston. Ah. Well, go and help the man pump his gas. You do it. I ain't going out there. Why not? It's your job. We may end up in an argument. Why would you do that? He is making moves on the woman I love, Earl. Now, you go out there and help that man. All right, all right. Mercy. You are about fit to be tied. I don't care what I am. And you tell him to quit messing around with Mrs. Lane. I will do no such thing. Get out of my way. Go on, then. can't believe that man's messing around with me. Look at him out. Out there talking to Earl like he knows him. He does, you dummy. Oh, yeah, of course he does. Look at that cap on his head. Makes him look like a basketball with hair sticking out the sides. Talk about me needing a haircut. What about him? Man looks like a cocker spaniel. I bet he has to have the barber shave his ears. <laughs> that's funny. I bet he does. That's a good one. Hair ears. I bet that's what Mrs. Lane calls it. One on, now, not to his face, of course, because she's a good Christian woman, but uh, behind his back. What are you doing? Standing here. Don't you have anything better to do? Well, I was just, um... You were just what? Watching. Watching what? No, let me guess. You were watching Boyd and me out there talking. No, I was not. I'm, I, I was watching the snow blowing out there. You don't get to see that very much around here, and I like it. You are one terrible liar. I am not. Fibber. No way. So what'd he say? Who? You know who. No, who? You know perfectly well who. I just want to hear you say his name. Boyd Woman Steeler Langston. Well, he's just saying hi and talked about our freak snowstorm. Oh, yeah, sure he was. He filled up his tank. You need to write out a ticket on it. He charged? Of course he did. He always does. Since when? Since always. Now write him up a ticket before I plant my boot on your backside. You and who else? 
just me. Now do it. Fine. Is that all he said? Nope. Oh, he told me what all he was going to do today. Oh, yeah, what's that? Stealing someone's woman? Well, pretty close. He's going over to Mrs. Lane's house and put up his feet in front of the fire for the afternoon. That ain't fair. And that ends our visit with Earl and Woody. Join us next time, won't you? Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen, the demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour, bring you Twisted Pulp Magazine, a journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed, worlds of the supernatural, worlds of dark satire, worlds of nightmarish futures, Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E dot com. (laughs) 